in this video a kind of Schmidt trigger circuit. Uh, but perhaps the better word is say a current amplifier that can dr drive a relay. Here is the circuit that I made in the past by the way. I publish it now. It was developed and there was inspiration out of another circuit that was also published on my YouTube channel. So here we have the a voltage apply and that voltage apply gives say the activation voltage here to the circuit. That's very important. Uh, the circuit is in fact a, um, a DC amplifier that acts on different voltages uh, to its input. And its input is here made with some uh, uh, with one Zener diode and two normal diodes etc etc. So here is the schematic. Perhaps that's interesting of course. Always interesting by the way. This is the schematic. And uh, the circuit has a quite big a voltage band where it can react. That uh, depends completely on the setting of the this potentiometer here. Of course also on the resistor here. It also depends on the Zener diode here. So here we have a kind of stabilized voltage uh, and uh, well it's not completely stabilized but anyway uh, out of that voltage we derive a voltage to drive the powerful relay. And I've used a 12 volt relay. Here is the brand Zettler. A uh, very powerful uh, relay has a DC resistance of 130 ohms. And of course you can switch with that um, relay all kinds of things. Activated via 12 volts. So let's see what happens. Perhaps that's interesting to show the power supply, the say the voltage with which it is driven is 12.7 volt at the moment. So here it is and I've uh, written here it's between 12 and 14 volts that the circuit can work. Of course it can also work on higher voltages but anyway you can try and test etc etc. So here is the say the activation voltage and here we see that activation voltage 15 volts at the moment and say here is the LED that's activated. So now the relay is activated and when I change here the activation voltage on a certain moment when the voltage gets too high and when I go back so now the voltage gets too high, the LED switch is off, of course with another relay you can make that something uh, switches on. Anyway, it has everything to do with the type of relay that you will use. So put on the light again, that gives perhaps more information. Uh, activated LED. 15 volts. So, and here is the power supply. Perhaps it's visible from this distance how it will work. Now it's say 15 volts. So, we're 
back to 15 volts the LED switch is on and now I go to a higher voltage and it switches off but uh, it's surely not so critical you can completely set uh, with the help of this potentiometer where the uh, Schmidt trigger will work where it will switch something on and here there are some practical uh, switch ranges that I found experimentally so uh, with the setting by the way of this potentiometer here of 1k a thousand ohms on on a 28 volts off at 27 volts on at uh, 25 25.3 volts off at 26.7 volts and of course this is a uh, say a kind of measurement that you have to do yourself taking some notes and even uh, when it's possible with a voltmeter that indicates voltages on one hundredths of a volt. That's important, could be important, especially when you want to use, for instance, this circuit in relation to a battery charger or whatever. So here again the switch ranges via the position of the 1k potentiometer no problem with that the circuit again the transistors have to amplify uh, amplification factor of the BD139 must be between 100 and 150 and the amplification factor of the BC547B must be approximately 250 otherwise the circuit will not work properly that was more or less all to tell so perhaps I'm gonna I'm able to show more say uh, switch moments in this circuit here is the power supply this is the activation voltage so now I turn the potentiometer that, that is this potentiometer here 1k to another position say so you can see it here you can also see here directly of course that changing the value of the potentiometer makes that the uh, relay switches off or on course logical so now I move the potentiometer to the highest position let's see where uh, the circuit will start to switch could be that it doesn't want to switch anyway let's try driving up the voltage now to 28 volts it doesn't work but when I turn here and that's the broadband uh, way that this circuit can work when I turn the potentiometer somewhat to a lower position there is a position here where it starts to work and now it works on 20.8 uh, 28.3 volts the relay switches now I bring back the activation voltage and it's still on the say hanging position so this has no effect that's also logical so we have to turn back the 
potentiometer somewhat to get it to a whole Schmidt trigger, kind of Schmidt trigger to critical position. So here in the middle of the potentiometer here, it's critical. Uh, so this critical 28 volts back to an well that was not expected but anyway the position of this potentiometer is critical like I told so so here we have set the um, say the input voltage potentiometer to critical position and here we see for instance that on 7.8 volts it switches off sorry uh, 10.4 volts it switches off and on 9.4 volts it switches on Uh, going to another position here of the potentiometer, let's see what happens. Now we are in the very, very low voltage range where the circuit still works. And we now go to the higher voltage range. So now we are, for instance, all in the 15 volt range where the circuit works. 11 volts on, 13 volts off. Still somewhat higher here. Oh, we are again on the lower voltage range. Anyway, so <coughs> now we are on the real high voltage activation part. So we we now are on. 670 volts on sixty volts off so now we are in the twenty twenty volt range anyway. So the setting of this potentiometer is critical. Uh, of course, this is completely analog. It's not digital. That means that temperature changes have an effect on the Zener diode. When it's very cold, the circuit will must be set to another position. Uh, the diodes are temperature sensitive. The Zener diode is temperature sensitive. The potentiometer is temperature sensitive, so uh, it's a good circuit. I don't doubt that, absolutely not. Uh, but that's something to be taken in to account. Thanks for watching. Hope it was a little bit interesting and clear. Here how the circuit was made. The transistors have to have a certain amplification factor that's very important in these kinds of circuit be circuits because it's all DC, DC driving, etc. etc.